Alright, cheers everybody, welcome back to Instant Screaming. Today we have They Look Like People and Extraordinary Tales with a little bit of a bonus because, uh, you know, I kind of wanted to talk about Stranger Things uh, on Netflix since I just finished binge-watching that this weekend. So first up, let's talk about They Look Like People. In They Look Like People, after his fiance leaves him, Wyatt becomes convinced that there are otherworldly creatures that are taking over people's bodies. He winds up staying for several days with a long-lost best friend in New York City and has to decide if he's going to use his connections to a secret organization that knows about the impending war to protect his friend or not. Now that sounds like a pretty great pitch, right? Unfortunately, I just didn't think this movie was very great. It was uh, a pretty boring and kind of pretentious. Now despite the pitch, the film is, is neither an honest and realistic exploration of mental illness and friendship, nor is it a tense descent into paranoia and isolation, while it seems like it wants to be both of those at different levels depending on how you read it, it's utterly hamstrung by the fact that its story consists entirely of insufferably quirky vignettes of the characters juvenilely goofing off and or discussing existential questions. Now I'll give them points for a fair amount of success for generating a bleak and melancholy atmosphere where everything is just kind of shades of gray, but uh, nothing in the action actually matches or contributes to this, so instead of actually being tense and paranoid, it just tells you that it wants to be tense and paranoid. And then the characters get drunk and hop around the apartment draped in bed sheets with socks on their hands pretending to be ghosts. The leads here are an insecure whining child and an aimless wanderer who is obviously insane. And there are two women here who are really only around to provide snarky coolness and sarcastic acceptance of the leads. The movie tries to set up this question of whether or not the invasion is real or just in Wyatt's head, but then they seem to settle on obvious schizophrenia pretty early on and give no hints to the contrary. And Wyatt's friends seems to just inexplicably go along with all this to the point of being gagged and tied to a chair in his basement. And then nothing actually happens and the payoff is that Maybe Wyatt realizes he's been hallucinating all of it and gets himself some help. So unfortunately, it's really disappointing what happened here because the concept is cool, there are some really cool visual moments, the poster is cool, the title is cool, but the movie itself just winds up being pretty boring. What can you do? But next up is Extraordinary Tales. Now, this is a, an interesting little anthology of animated shorts of Edgar Allan Poe stories, each done in a different art style. The framing story is a relatively uninteresting dialogue between Poe himself, animated as a, a raven, although the credits say it's a crow, and, um, and death. Now, Extraordinary Tales includes the stories The Telltale Heart, The Mask of the Red Death, The Pit and the Pendulum, The Facts in the Case of Mr. Valdemar, and The Fall of the House of Usher, all of which are pretty entertaining and narrated by amazing celebrities and voice actors. Though the weakest story, I think, is The Pit and the Pendulum, which was kind of unfortunate, uh, narrated by Guillermo del Toro. But uh, all the others had much more compelling animation, particularly The Mask of the Red Death and The Telltale Heart, though wildly different, but very, very cool. Now, there's not a whole lot to the framing story itself. It, it was mostly just uh, steering the conversation towards Poe referencing one of his stories. And the animation in the framing story wasn't particularly great either. But the framing story doesn't really matter. We're here for the, the Poe stories. Now, in addition to the art styles, what really sells the anthology is that all of the voices during doing the narrations are huge names, amazing stars, like one of Christopher Lee's last recordings, uh, archived recordings of Bela Lugosi, Guillermo del Toro does one, uh, Roger Corman, Julian Sands, all, all narrate different stories. So while it's not spectacular or amazing, Extraordinary Tales is a fun little way to see Poe's stories illustrated and. Switching to all the different styles of animation keeps things pretty engaging and actually very interesting to watch. All right, so the bonus round is the Netflix original Stranger Things, and I was just—I didn't have anything prepared, but I just wanted to talk about this while it was still new. Uh, now, Stranger Things is this amazingly '80s retro Stephen King Goonies style story about monsters and government experiments. And everybody's been talking about how, how gloriously 80s it is and how gloriously Stephen King it is, and, and that's all true. I just wanted to give my take, which is that the show is very, very fun to watch and very entertaining, although ultimately the story doesn't really seem to go anywhere. I've seen a couple of reviews called the show Style Over Substance, which is definitely true, uh, but this is one of those cases where it's having so much fun with the style that it doesn't really matter that there's nothing substantiative there. Now, I feel like I might be slightly too young to fully understand all the, the 80s references, 
um, and all the little hints of, of media that it's kind of worked into its story. But that doesn't keep them from being sort of classic inclusions, and probably the reason that they work so well in, in Stranger Things is the reason that all these elements worked so well when they are, were originally done in their own stories in the 80s. The story definitely isn't breaking new ground, and the monster, although very cool, isn't anything too unique. The whole package has a lot of great and really endearing characters that you really want to watch, and there's a, a, a childlike sense of adventure to the whole thing, possibly just because the show is following kids. I think it is well worth watching at least a couple of episodes just to see whether or not you're going to enjoy the ride. And uh, check out Stranger Things on Netflix. Anyway, folks, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for checking out some instant screaming. If you wanted to talk about any of the movies or shows that I've talked about today, uh, do please let me know what you thought of them in the comment section below. And uh, also leave a comment if you have any suggestions for other uh, movies or shows that you would like to see on this show or on Modern Horror. You could also hit us up on the Facebook page or the Build Environment. Twitter account. As always, like and subscribe for more videos and uh, cheers.